Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah 7.14 Christmas is a time of anticipated gatherings. Families especially anticipate the homecomings of those who are far away geographically, but never far from the heart. Two of my sons lived away from home during their college years. Thankfully, their college was only about an hour's drive from home, so if there was a burning desire to see them, my wife and I could drive there. But gas prices being what they were, and our schedules being what they were, we didn't really see our sons, except at Thanksgiving and Christmas time. And that made those two holidays all the more special. The weeks leading up to Christmas were filled with all kinds of anticipation, and high on the list was seeing our sons. Christmas is a time of anticipated gatherings, perhaps because the first Christmas was one of the most anticipated events of all time. God was going to come to visit his people, and this was anticipated for thousands of years. Ever since the fall into sin recorded in Genesis 3, God's people have been anticipating the coming of their salvation. Instead of God anticipating our return to him, he came to be with us. We actually couldn't make it home because of our sin, and we would be lost forever unless God came to be with us and redeem us, which he did through his Son, Jesus Christ. Now, while Christmas doesn't officially start until the evening of Christmas Eve, the weeks leading up to Christmas, typically referred to as Advent, are filled with Christmas music at my house and in my office. And this helps build the joyful anticipation of the coming of Christmas. Now, there are some songs and carols that come and go from Christmas to Christmas, but there are others that are mainstays. And one of the mainstays for me is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. It is, strictly speaking, an Advent hymn. The word Advent means coming, and the first line of this hymn is, O Come. The coming looked for is the coming of Christ, but not really the first coming, but rather the second coming of Christ. The days leading up to Christmas are filled with anticipation, the anticipation of the joy of being with family, but especially those we have not seen throughout the year. The anticipation of the festivals and feasts associated with Christmas also fill the season. But for a Christian, the supreme anticipation is that of Jesus Christ coming back to take all believers in him to heaven where, as one Sunday school student described it, it is Christmas morning all the time. The Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, is built around this anticipation by taking the language of Israel's anticipation of the first coming of the Messiah and filling the hearts of Christians with the most impatient waiting of the second coming. This song was based on metrical paraphrases of the O antiphons, which are a series of plain chant antiphons that are added to the Magnificat in the liturgy of Vespers in the final days of Advent leading up to Christmas. Each of these antiphons use one of the messianic names for Jesus that are found in the Old Testament. Arranged in a specific way, in the Latin, the words can form the acrostic Ero Cross, Emmanuel Rex Orions, Clavis Radix Adonai Sapientia, which is a Latin phrase, tomorrow I will be there. While the Messiah was anticipated for many tomorrows in the Old Testament, there was eventually the last tomorrow that we call Christmas Eve. So much of what we know and believe about Jesus Christ is given to us by the Old Testament or in the Old Testament word pictures. Jesus the Messiah, the Christ, came the first time to ransom us from sin, death, and the power of the devil. He did this by taking our sins and dying on the cross to pay the penalty for them. In their place, Jesus gives us his righteousness, and in that righteousness we are now the new Israel and await our final ransom and freedom from the exile of sin and death in this world. Jesus, the descendant of Jesse, the father of King David, gave us the ultimate victory over death and the grave. The gloomy clouds of the night of death will be dispersed by the glorious light of the day spring on high. Jesus, open to us heaven. We had been locked out of heaven because of our sins. Our sins separated us from God because he is holy and sin cannot be where holiness resides. With the forgiveness won by Jesus, the son of David, now ours, he unlocks heaven for us. We know we are sinners because of the law of God, the Ten Commandments. It shows us our sins as a mirror bright. The law was given as tablets of stone by Moses from Mount Sinai and accompanied 
by thunder and lightning. Now Jesus is not a new Moses giving us a new set of laws to keep. Jesus is the Lord himself. Lord in the language of the Old Testament is Adonai. And instead of thunder and lightning, we have Jesus' gospel in the earthquake and darkness of Good Friday. With Jesus' death on the cross, the law of God was fulfilled completely, and all our sins, our transgressions of God's law, were forgiven. As we await the coming of Christmas, we live in the anticipation of the second coming of Christ, who will gather us all home to heaven. Each Christmas Eve and Christmas morning is a little glimpse into the glory, love, and peace that awaits us in heaven. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, be with us as we anticipate our Christmas celebrations and the homecomings they will bring. Help us to be ever watchful of your second coming to take us home to heaven. In your name we pray. Amen.